good, my nine-year-old self. You must forgive me. Don't look so surprised, perplexed and eager to be gone, balancing your on your hands or on the tightrope. You would rather run than walk, rather climb than run, rather leap from a height than anything. You must. What's that? Good. Order. You must forgive me. Don't. Interesting, isn't it? It's quite demanding in tone. You must forgive me. Don't look so surprised. So what, what do we know about the child? What do they look like? They look, Tegan? Good. They look surprised, perplexed and eager to be gone. Write that in your margin. It's the child. You must forgive me. Don't look so surprised, perplexed and eager to be gone in this listing. Balancing on your hands or on the tightrope. Sense of activity. You would rather run than walk. Actually, I'm going to run through the whole thing very quickly because I haven't done that once. You would rather run than walk, rather climb than run, rather leap from a height than anything. I have spoiled this body we once shared. Look at the scars. Watch the way I move. Careful of a bad back or a bruised foot. Do you Three minutes after waking, we would jump straight out of the ground floor window into the summer morning. That dream we had. No doubt it's as fresh in your mind as the white paper to write it on. We made a start, but something else came up. A baby vomit or a bag of sherbet lemons and besides, that summer of ambition created an ice lolly factory, a wasp trap and a den by the cesspits. I'd like to say that we could be friends, but the truth is we have nothing in common beyond a few shared years. I won't keep you then. Time to pick rose hips for tuppence a pound. Time to hide down scared lanes from men in cars after girl children. Or to lunge out over the water on a rope that swings from that tree. Long buried in housing. But no, I shan't cloud your morning. God knows I have fears enough for both of us. For us both. I leave you in an ecstasy of concentration. Slowly peeling a ripe scab from your knee to taste it on your tongue. Okay, good. So... What's the story of the poem? Turn to the person beside you, five seconds. Five. Good, so Noah, what's the story of the poem? Good. Write this on your page. Looking back at her former self, at a past connection that is gone. So looking back at her former self at a past connection that's gone, good. What's the primary emotion, Grace? Nostalgia. Good. Primary emotion is nostalgia. Regret and loss, I would say, also in there. Loss. Loss of connection. They aren't the same person. They, they have, they've got a few shared years, but that's it. Good. And also to my nine-year-old self. Okay, so let's turn this that one. So now you must forgive me. Don't look so surprised, perplexed and eager to be gone. So you've got the sense of the child active and this adult trying to hold them back, balancing on her hands or on a tightrope. You would rather run than walk, rather climb than run, rather leap from a height than anything. So this sense of activity. I have spoiled. This is negative. We want shared past tense, present tense. There's a past and present contrast. Look at the scars, the damage, really sense of damage. Look at and watch, notice the, again, this de demand, the older, older self to the younger. Look at the scars and watch the way I move, careful of a bad back or a bruised foot, something about aging. Of course, you've got the sense of bad back, bruised foot, balancing your hands are on the tightrope. So a direct contrast between child and adult. Do we notice that? Balancing on your hands are on the tightrope, sense of bad back or bruised foot, so we've got contrast. Do you remember how three minutes after waking, we would jump straight out of the ground floor window into the summer morning? So this is a rhetorical question, makes a question. Do you remember how three minutes after we, 
the inclusive pronoun. We would jump straight out of the window. Do you remember how we used to be active? So there's this moment of togetherness. Do you remember how three minutes after waking, we would jump straight out the ground floor window into the summer morning? So we've got imagery. Active. That dream we had. So this is positive. There's a brief moment of positivity. That dream we had, no doubt it's as fresh in your mind as the white paper to write it on. We made a start, still we. We made a start, but something else came up. A baby vole, a bag of sherbet lemons that interests, that interests her to the young self. And she's very quickly uh, losing interest in things. A baby vole or a bag of sherbet lemons. What interests this younger self? What intrigues this younger self? And besides, that summer of ambition, lolly factories, that summer of ambition. Wow. Ambition, hopes, dreams, ideas. That summer of ambition created an ice lolly factory, a wasp trap and a den by the cesspit. A cesspit is your sewage pit. OK, so it's interesting contrast, the idea of a den by the cesspit. So it's something not so a sense of unease, grand hopes, grand creations. And these things that do interest you when you're nine, an ice lolly factory, a wasp trap and a den. I can be complete I can attain to the fact this is definitely the case for my eight-year-old would love all of these things dens wasp traps isolated factors yes grand creations of childhood but this sense also of unease with the cesspit so we've got this dream do you know what the dream was that dream we have it's interesting isn't it what dream love that what dream that dream we had that dream we, had, we don't know only her and the younger self know it we are excluded what dream we made a start on what what did we make a start on it's interesting and then we've got this change i'd like to say we could be friends I'd like to say we could be friends. More hopeless. Disconnect. I'd like to say we could be friends, but the truth is we have nothing in common beyond a few shared years. The hopeful tone is gone. And then this short sentence, I won't keep you then. Quite blunt. A recognition. She is not her childhood self. And we're interested by the scars, isn't it? The scars. Look at the scars and watch the way I move careful. Look at the scars and watch the way I move careful. Bless you. Careful of a bruised foot or a back, yeah. It's really interesting. Scars, watch the way I move careful. And now I won't keep you then. They're too far apart. They're too disconnected. Time to pick rose hips for tuppence a pound. Now I'm going to try and draw a rose hip what a rose becomes after the bloom is gone. Time to pick rose hips for tub and a pound. Time to hide down scared lanes from men in cars after girl children. It's like it's sinister. But the kind of stranger danger of childhood, time to, time to. Repetition. So sinister or is it childhood fears? Is it about childhood fears? When actually adulthood is much more challenging than that. Possibly we've got lots of sense. We're not really sure. Time to pick roses for tuppence a pound. Time to hide down scared lanes from men in cars after girl children. Or to lunge out over the water on a rope that swings from the tree. I'm an excellent artist. The swings from that tree long buried in housing. Long buried. A death. Buried. Interesting verb. Buried. Built built up it'd be something about a building buried buried the 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 rope that swings from that tree long buried in housing but no i shan't cloud your morning i won't keep you then but no i shan't cloud your morning so negative that the narrator is a cloud it's interesting that's a really interesting metaphor god knows i have fears enough for the both of us now that's interesting scared i have fears scared lanes from men in cars after girls and i have fears enough 
for us both. Adulthood is to be feared. It's very interesting. I leave you. And then this final. So it started with you must forgive me. Don't look so surprised. You must forgive me. Don't look. And then it finishes with I leave you. Beginning and end. Don't. You must. I leave you. Don't. You must. I leave you. I leave you in an ecstasy of concentration, slowly peeling a ripe scab from your knee to taste it on your tongue. It's a quite astonishingly surprising image to finish. Incredibly detailed image. Peeling away, away a scab, which makes a scar, of course. Look at these scars, really interesting. Peeling a scab, scars. Ecstasy, interesting description of peeling a scab away, an ecstasy of concentration. So the fascination of childhood, the lack of recognition, this will scar. I think it's really interesting, a very interesting end to taste it on your tongue. Senses. Very complex poem. It's about a connection and a distance, connection and distance that we are. Are we similar or? We are distant from our childhood self. OK, um, what could it be compared with? What themes are in the poem before we go on? What themes are in the poem at uh, Ruby? What themes are in the poem? Let's so start with childhood. What else? Growing older. Transition. Closeness. Distance. Good. OK, write those down. Lovely. Are we happy with that? It's not too complicated a poem. It is just quite challenging and odd. But it's basically a moment of connection in time where she tries to find her former self and realizes she's not like her former self. 